and welcome to the iterative structure in Python. <clears throat> All right, we've gotten through the sequential structure, we've gotten through the conditional structure, now we look at the iterative structure. The iterative structure probably is not, for most of you, uh, something that you're overly uh, comfortable with yet. Uh, some of you are probably uh, just being introduced to that in other courses. Some of you may have already been introduced to it and uh, gone through many exercises with it. With that said, um, we're going to walk through a little bit. I, I trust, though, that everybody has at least been introduced to the iterative structure in previous or current classes thus far. So we'll talk about what the iterative structure is. We'll talk about how it does, how it works in Python. In Python, there's two types of different loops. Uh, that's basically what we're talking about when we're talking about the iterative structure, the while loop and the for loop. We'll talk about some control statements that we can put into our loops, and then we'll talk about some nested loops and how we can actually do those also, uh, very similar to other courses in that case. All right, so uh, let's get into it. Uh, I think uh, Python makes looping very easy. Uh, however, I also think that the iterative structure is probably one of the more powerful uh, structures there is and what you can actually accomplish. And so the iterative structure is a process where a set of instructions or statements is executed repeatedly for a specified number of times or until a condition is met. New students to programming typically have a harder time with the iterative structure. Uh, in, in, in doing so, the reason I believe is that it is so powerful and so simple that it's kind of hard. Um, the best thing I can tell everybody is, is that if you did not have an iterative structure and you find yourself in a program having to repeat code over and over and over again to accomplish something, you have a possibility for a loop. When it comes to that type of logic, there's gonna be situations where the iterative structure is gonna be very obvious. That might be working, for, working with a database as you deal with uh, result sets. It might be working with arrays, uh, lists, uh, and so on. Uh, but in other cases, uh, the iterative structure more pops up when you realize I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. And with that, instead of writing the, and repeating the same code, I can write a, a, a iterative structure, a loop to do the same thing. And I'm going to loop until something is accomplished or until I meet a goal or I meet a number, whatever it is. So in this case here, what we're looking for is that an iterative structure also contains a conditional structure. Every loop has a condition to it. So in this case here, we ask the question, has the condition been met one way or the other? If it's, uh, uh, in this case, I should say, if, the, if there's a condition exists, I should say, still exists. If it does, we should go down to true and we're going to do something. And then we're gonna loop back up and ask if the condition still exists. So we're basically gonna be looping until this condition does not exist anymore, then we finally fall out. The goal of this structure, though, is, is that whatever the condition is, at some point in time, that condition needs to be met, met or uh, changed or whatever it is, because if we don't meet it, we'll go in what's called an infinite loop. And you'll basically be doing this, it'll just be looping and looping and looping, and your program will just stare at you. And so we need to make sure whatever our process is, uh, that within that process, there are things uh, within it that could actually change the condition of what we're checking. Does that make sense? Looking at it this way, it's a very, very simple thing. Again, what students need to do uh, as they're learning how to program is taking advantage of this particular structure. And I think that comes with practice and it comes with awareness and it comes with trying. But you've got to really seek out the possibilities of this structure and what it could actually do for you. It is probably the most powerful of all of them, just from the mere fact it combines conditioning, uh, conditional structure with a loop, okay? But again, the whole idea is you need to run code over and the same code over and over and over again, and that's why you will do it, all right? I mean, I'm gonna go back one more time. The best way of getting this is try and make it, keep it as simple as you possibly can, all right? But we'll talk about that here a little bit more, and you'll have some opportunities to play around with it and get better at it. All right, so in Python, there's two different types of loops. Uh, first one is a while loop. This is different than some of your other languages that you may be aware of. Uh, in Python, we have the while loop. The, uh, with the while loop, we can execute a set of statements as long as a condition is true. So in this case here, we have int number equals one. And while int number is less than six, 
we're going to print the INT number. And so in this case, it would be one. We'll print one. We're going to increment it. And then we're going to loop back up. All right? So this is how you write the while loop. Once again, note the colon at the end of while, very similar to the if statements and so on. Note the indentation. Everything that's indented is part of the loop. So whatever you put after this while loop, uh, the next sentence or whatever, the next statement, if it's not indented, it won't be part of the loop. If it is indented, it will be part of the loop. So you need to be careful there. All right. So and also note that we're incrementing this number. We are changing this number. So at some point in time, we will be above six or equal to or above six and then fall out of the loop. So how this works is it's going to come through, check the condition. If the condition is true, INT number is less than six, it will do what is there. It comes back up. It's going to check the condition again. At some point in time, when this becomes false, let's say INT number does equal six, it will then fall out of the loop completely here. Go to the next line. It will not repeat these statements. It falls out of the loop. Does that make sense? Once again, I would try this, I would practice it, I would look at the results, I would understand the results until it hits you how this condition, or I'm sorry, how this structure actually works. All right? Very powerful, yet very simple. All right? Indentation. It's a really key to Python. Make sure you note that. All right, so for a loop, uh, the for loop is the second type of loop in Python. The for loop is used for iterating over a sequence. That is either a list, a tuple, a dictionary, a set, or a string. These things are called arrays in a lot of languages, okay? And uh, I know most of you probably at this point in time have not been introduced to arrays. We will come back to arrays a little bit later on with Python, a little bit later on in this course, but right now we're not going to cover it, okay? Uh, but just for sake of example, this str fruits, as you see, it does a string. It's equal to apple, comma, banana, comma, cherry. This is called a list. In this case here, there's three things within this str fruits. Uh, again, we'll start talking about what a list is later on, but it's, it's like a combination of multiple strings wrapped up into one string. For us to walk through this, we can sit there and say 4x in str fruits. So what the for loop does is it actually takes starts at a certain location, and in this case, x. x is going to be equal to zero. That's called a uh, in, in this it's called a subscript or an index, okay? And it's going to be pointing at the very first entry within this list. Now, once again, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're not going. To, I'm not going to ask you to do any of these lists right now, but this is sick of example on what a for loop can do. So it's going to start at zero, which is the first location within the list, and it's going to then print it. And it's going to keep going. So it's going to do, it's going to keep going until there's nothing else in str fruits. Does that make any sense at all? So if I added more fruit to this, I don't know, an orange and an apple, or apples are already in there, but an orange and ah, give me a kumquat or a kiwi or and all those things. This, I think, will keep looping until there's no more entries within that str fruits, and that's how it does it. What's nice about the for loop, it automatically increments for you. If you recall, the while loop, you got to increment yourself. The for loop does it automatically for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Once again, note the colon, note the indentation, okay? The print is part of that loop, and note that it auto increment, accumulates. Uh, so increments, accumulates, whatever you want to say. That X right there will actually take care of that. All right. <clears throat> Again, I'm sorry in a way that we have not covered these things yet. We're not ready for that. <clears throat> so giving you an example of a for loop and what it's for on something that makes no sense to you in regards to lists and so on might be a little bit unfair. But if you can at least understand what we're doing here, this for is going to increment, go as many times as there's entries within the list. That's all we're basically saying. Okay. However, we can use the for loop for something we do understand. We can use the, uh, to loop through a set of code a specified number of times, we can use the range function, okay? So if we find ourselves that we want to do something five times, ten times, or maybe based upon what a user gives us, uh, what we would do is use this thing for range. So in this case, for x in range six, what this will do is it will go and print 
zero, one, two, three, four, five. It starts at zero, that's the default. We can set it at one. We can set it at anything we wanna start it with, but that's what the range is doing. So range is saying, loop through this six times. The output of this particular uh, function, matter of fact, the sitting right here, would be uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, because X starts at zero and we're printing X. It will increment to one, increment to two, and it will loop through five times. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go back, slow down for a second. Once again, our while loop. These are probably the ones you're gonna be using more right now as we kind of start getting in, uh, introduced to this. And you will do this based upon conditions. The conditions that doesn't have to be numeric. It could be anything while A equals B. But if we know exactly how many times we want to loop through something based on input, based upon the fact we only want to do something 10 times, or based upon the, the, the length of a list, we can use a for loop. And there's some efficiencies there because it auto increments for us. Okay? For loops are very similar. They're, they're in all languages. You've probably seen for loops if you got into uh, 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 the, the, the iterative structure already, uh, but that's, they're very similar to most other languages. Okay. Okay. There's opportunities to change the execution from its normal flow. That if we get into a loop and we realize, well, we did what we wanted to do, and now we're done with this loop, we want to get out of this loop, we can do things like break, continue, and pass. Uh, break and continue are more obvious, are the ones that you'll see more obvious. Pass is something that's in there. I'm not sure how often you'll actually use it, but let's talk about those a little bit. So in this case right here, break terminates the loop statement and transfers execution to the statement immediately following the loop. So if I'm doing a loop for x equal to fruits, and I'm printing the x, and if, but if x equals banana for whatever strange reason I want to do this, notice, I have an if condition now within my loop. I can do that. I can have a structure within a structure. I can break it. And so what will happen is it completely steps out of the loop, even though we're not all the way at the end of the list, and it goes to the next line of code. Every once in a while, you may want to do that. Every once in a while, you may come across a condition. I, I got what I needed. I'm done looping through this. Now let's move on. And that's what break is for. So keep that in the back of your mind. Continue. Continue causes the loop to skip the remainder of the, its body and immediately retest its, uh, its condition prior to reiterating. So in this case, it's a little bit different. So for x equal to str fruits, if x equals banana, don't do anything. Continue. Continue says skip the rest of it, but go back up to the next one. So uh, what the answer of this one would actually be, oops, let me go back, I'm sorry, would be uh, it would print apple and it would print cherry. It would not print banana because it says to... Uh, uh, to continue and not print. Does that make sense? That's actually called a continue control statement. Every once in a while, you may want to use them. I think it's going to be very rarely you use any of these control statements in your code, but they're there if you need it. Pass is used when you do not want to any command or code to execute. So this is kind of a odd little thing. I, you know, so. In this case here, it's sort of like to continue. So for x equal for, for x uh, in fruits, if x equals banana, pass. Don't do anything is basically what it's saying. However, my next statement is print and then print x. It's literally going to print this and then still print this. But the pass is an opportunity to say I don't want to do anything. That's basically what it's doing. In this particular example, I'm overriding that not do anything and putting that in there. I don't think you're gonna use this hardly at all. Uh, I don't think I can come across any situation uh, based on my history where I would use such a control uh, statement uh, as pass. But I want you to be aware of it. And once again, this is in your resources so you can go look it up and get more information on it. All right? The final thing we wanna talk about is nested loops. A nested loop is a loop inside a loop. We've just seen a structure within inside a structure where I can actually have a conditional statement within my loop. I can do, I can have a loop within a loop also if I wanted to do something like this. For this particular case, I'm going back, and I think the big reason you would do something like this is going back to these lists. So when we actually get to that, uh, you'll probably start understanding this a little bit more. But in this case here, we have a list called str adjective. 
probably should have spelled that all out. <laughs> I would want you guys to spell that all out. STR fruits, apple, banana, and cherry, okay? So what this is going to do is going to, for X, it, it's going to start looping for red. And then inside, it's going to loop through the fruits. And so the results of this would be red apple, red banana, red fruit. It would print off the X and print off the Y. Once we're done with this, it will go back up and start all over again. And we'll go to the next X. The next X will be big, okay? It will actually start all over again for Y in this case, where now our next answers would be big apple, big banana, big cherry. And finally, tasty apple, tasty banana, tasty cherry. So if we actually look at how this executes, here's the code for it, red, big, tasty, apple, banana, cherry. It's a loop without a loop. So we're gonna take this loop here, it's gonna come in, notice the indention, okay? And it's gonna loop through each one of those fruits. Once I'm done, it comes back up to the 4, 4x, increments to the next one big, and you see the results. Red apple, red banana, red cherry. Big apple, big banana, big cherry, and finally tasty apple, tasty banana, and tasty cherry. All right? So in a sense, that is looping. Once again, it's a powerful tool. Uh, in some cases, you need to practice it. Don't get too frustrated with it. Embrace it. Try to learn it. Try to figure out how you can apply the iterative structure to your programs if you're finding that you're doing the same code over and over again. Forgive me for uh, you know, showing you some of these lists a little bit before our time. It's more of the example of what the for loop is, since I'm explaining it. Right now, if you want to focus on the while loop, that's fine. And if you want to focus on the for loop, you'll probably use range right now if those situations exist. Okay, and we'll show you both in our example in our code uh, in the next video.